Okay, it's recording and let's start. You keep your recording. Let's get behind it. Let's get it. Ready? You in the free walk power where you need to move. Slide over to okay. that way. Yeah. Not rev, I mean the guy. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I look at you and I keep my body right there. Right, like yes. <laughs> okay, good. For the record, begin with your name and your title, and you can begin with the press. Um, I'm Pastor uh, Dr. Eddie Victor, uh, convener and president for the Coalition of Concerned Citizens. Uh, the Coalition of Concerned Citizens has called this press conference today out of urgent concern regarding the mayor's bid to buy out minority Bahamian shareholders of ICD Utilities. Um, ICD Utilities uh, owns 50% of the Grand Bahama Power Company with an overall Bahamian equity interest of 19.63%. Emira is seeking to secure 100% ownership of Grand Bahama Power Company, a vital utility infrastructure on the island of Grand Bahama. The Coalition of Concerned Citizens strongly opposes Emira's proposed buyout of Bahamian shareholders. Our opposition is based on the following. One, any company such as a power company within the jurisdiction of the Bahamas should maintain a significant percentage of Bahamian ownership. A good example of, of this um, ownership is the Bahamas Telecommunication Company. The present ownership percentage of that company is cable and wireless communications 49%, Bahamas government 49%, and BTC Foundation 2%. Number two, a vital infrastructure such as a power plant along with generation, transmission, and distribution should not be owned 100% by a foreign company. This creates concerns with energy security and our country's sovereignty as it relates to the energy sector. Number three, Amira Grand Bahama Power Company's business model, policies, and mode of operation have decimated the economy of Grand Bahama. High, high electricity base rates have resulted in closures of businesses, hotels, unemployment, and hundreds of people living without uh, electricity. It is important to note that high electricity rates contribute to a higher cost of living. Number four, prior to Emira's Grand Bahama Power rate application that was approved by the Grand Bahama Port Authority in January 2016, Grand Bahama Island was already paying the highest base rates of electricity in the Bahamas. Despite this fact, Emira Grand Bahama Power Company applied to increase rates during a time when the global oil prices was plummeting. The approval received led to increased electricity base rates and, hard, and, and greater hardship on businesses and residential customers. Number five, high electricity rates have been a major barrier to potential investors for Grand Bahama. One of the primary concerns of investors when considering investing in a territory is the cost of electricity. Amira Grand Bahama Power has been unable to provide low affordable power to their customers, hereby becoming a major roadblock both to local and foreign investors. Number six. During the period of 2014-2016, there was a major reduction in global oil prices, um, which, which caused the markets to just plummet. Emira Grand Bahama Power failed to pass on significant savings to their customers in fuel surcharges. Number seven, the present generation capacity of Emira Grand Bahama Power Company cannot effectively supply electricity at peak low demand. Therefore, there is a great need for another power company on the island that can provide affordable, reliable electricity to the customers. Number eight, the Mira Grand Bahama Power Company is a monopoly providing electricity to customers throughout Grand Bahama. Monopolies have a greater responsibility to deliver customer satisfaction. On the other hand, because there is no competition, Emira Grand Bahama Power has failed to meet this standard. And number nine, our final point. The it government of the Bahamas and the Grand Bahama Port Authority signed a memorandum of understanding in May 2016, 
um, and in that in that um, MOU, section 1.18, Grand Bahama Port Authority agreed to collaborate with the government in establishing a mechanism and function to ensure the exercise of regulatory powers and functions vested in the Grand Bahama Port Authority are consistent with the national policy, regulations, and laws of the Bahamas, including, if possible, through the utilization of the existing independent regulators. Despite Grand Bahama Port Authority's overwhelming commitment to work with our government when it came to regulatory laws and goals, um, in fact, the Grand Bahama uh, Port Authority has done a tremendous um, job in working with the government to try to make things happen in Grand Bahama. Emira Grand Bahama Power Company began legal action in the Supreme Court to prevent the Utilities Regulation Competition Authority, ERPA, from regulating or seeking to exercise license and regulatory authority over it. This type of action disrespects our people, our government, our laws, and the, gov and the government agency created to regulate the energy sector. ERPA presently regulates Bahamas Power and Light, BTC, Alive, Cable Bahamas, and all television and radio stations in the Bahamas. It should raise concerns that Grand Bahama Power Company is resisting the policy to be regulated by ERPA. Uh, this morning we have sent a letter to the Prime Minister petitioning the government to not to approve um, um, Amira's acquisition of Bahamian owned shares. It is our opinion that Amira's ex expansion goals are not in the best interest of the people and businesses of Grand Bahama. And it's important to also state that what drives our coalition is this. Our coalition loves God, loves our island, and loves our country. And that's all that drives us in what we do in fighting for lower cost of electricity in Grand Bahama. You've been in this fight for a long time, um, yes. especially trying to get lower power rates, and now it's like they're taking it one step further by trying to just... Uh, what's your optimism level like, and how do you feel the government will respond to this, and what do you see happening, or hope it's happening? I believe that if you're consistent with anything, you'll be successful. And when we began this campaign, we had determined among ourselves that we would be consistent. No matter how long it takes, no matter what happens, we can be successful in one area and you know you can have your setbacks and others. But the key thing is to be consistent. We are, um, um, we believe that the change in the energy sector is upon us. And so our um, fight will intensify to fight for lower cost of electricity in our island within one year. That's how confident we are. And um, also, it's important to mention that in our, in, our, in our prior press conference, that we have petitioned the government not to renew the East End and West End agreement uh, between the government and the Grand Bahama uh, Power Company. Uh, we believe that um, it is time that another power company um, would go ahead and provide power in those districts, and um, we there are those power companies ready to do it. And so, and so um, we believe that this will be a, a pivotal point in changing the cost of power on this island. And what it will also do, um, it will also provide um, Bahamians the opportunity to actually own and control a power plant on this island. And I think this is the new day that we're, we're upon right now. And I believe that um, the government's policies, which have been um, which has been clearly stated that they want to promote entrepreneurship, that they, they want to empower Bahamians. And uh, all of what can happen, um, particularly if this, dream, if this disagreement is not um, um, renewed, uh, it will open up the doors to all those areas, entrepreneurship, uh, new jobs. Uh, it, it, it will be really a new day in the energy sector. And we need that to happen. And I believe that what happens in Grand Bahama will become a pattern of what could happen throughout the rest of the Bahamas. What will be the next step to intensify this campaign? And what we're going to say to residents of Grand Bahama to come together and just really support this issue? Well, well um, we're going to have a series of town meetings um, leading into December. Um, 
we, we would like to get one done um, on December, sorry, October 31st uh, in uh, 8 Mile Rock uh, in the Western District. Then we're going to do one in West End. Then we're going to go in the East and we're going to do one right in uh, Freeport. And uh, so uh, we're going to um, be announcing those dates very shortly. Uh, but the first one will be October 31st. We just haven't confirmed the venue yet. I may have that venue by the end of the day. But uh, we're going to go, uh, we're going to be doing town meetings. We're going to be on social media. Uh, we're going to be talking to all the government agencies, um, uh, particularly when it comes to this uh, this, 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 this possible transaction taking place. It should not happen. And we're going to do all in our powers to make sure it doesn't happen. Anything else? Um, okay. represent workers and if you don't have any job or any business or no employment you have no workers and the high cost of electricity is a prohibitive factor in terms of your businesses entrepreneurship and employment and so if anything that could be done to reduce the cost of energy especially if it, if it need not be so high I've known of businesses here that have closed people that are afraid to open and operate because they cannot afford the electricity bill and so I think uh, we have a just cause because we're looking out for our people. I also endorse the East and the West having new providers of electricity, particularly if they're behaving own. I think it's a good example. It's something that the government and the citizens should get behind because we believe in putting people first. And people are, payments are frustrated that in our country, it seems like everybody doesn't get a break besides the Bahamian businessman who's trying to do something new. I have every confidence in the groups that are proposing to come in. I have confidence in the Pastor Victor and the direction he wants uh, to take us in this regard, and he has the full support of myself and the Grand Mama District in um, terms of Mama Teachers. Okay. Thank you. Good day. Um, as the trade union is here on Grand Bahama, and an affiliate of the Trade Union Congress of the Commonwealth of Bahamas, we stand in solidarity with the Coalition of Concerned Citizens here on Grand Bahama in the quest of ensuring that there's a proper electricity power generation going on here on Grand Bahama. It should not be a monopoly. It should be a diversified exercise wherein that the people of Grand Bahama from the east to the west, inclusive of our central Grand Bahama, will be able to afford electricity on this island. And so therefore, in representation of the working class, the working man and woman out there, who has to go day to day trying to provide for their family, trying to ensure that there's a strong economy on this island in order for them to, to provide for their family. We stand to air their concerns because if nobody speaks for them, then they truly will okay. perish. Mm -hmm. And just like in the days of old, when the walls of Jericho had to come down, the people didn't march once, they didn't march two, they didn't march three times, neither four, five, or six, but they marched seven times. So you gotta stay at the course. And at the end of the day, you will yield the results that you need to yield. And so we stand in solidarity. Thank you. I am a member of the Trade Union Congress, as it is called, as the police said, and we stand in solidarity with this cause. What we are asking is for the pastors and those who have flock under them to come out 
and support us and be with us. We're also asking other citizens, business people, who feel that this is a very serious infraction on our rights to preserve ourselves to also come up. You know, one of the things that come from the Bible that Solomon said is, woe when the slave becomes king, because then that slave wants to hoard everything for himself. So we're asking our political leaders, who are our servants, not to side with those foreign, but to come also with us and help us, the Bohemian people, to gain and get those things that were said that we should. Because, you know, W. Du Bois once said, what happens to a dream deferred? It's been 40 long years. Fix it, please. There's, there's one other thing I want to say, and then I just need you to be short. Sorry, because we're going to put this on online. Um, um, uh, Frank? Yeah. Hold on. Mr. Brooklyn, you all good? We, we want to make... It's a little short. <laughs> what I want you to do is like, take a, a photo shot, and then we're going to take one together. So get, make sure you get Megan in it with, with your shot. Okay. Um, we want to make an appeal to all the Bahamian shareholders of ICD utilities. We appeal to you to really consider this offer that is being made to you by Amira. I know things have been financially challenged for all of us, but what is happening here is a matter of principle when it comes to the sovereignty of our country and the ownership and participation of Bahamians in a utility company. And so we want, we want to now appeal to all those Bahamian shareholders. We consider selling your shares. Stand your ground. Don't sell if you don't have to. Because I can assure you that if a mirror wants to buy your shares, those shares are valuable. And they are more valuable than what you think they are. And so I want to encourage you. This is appeal, especially for those group of shareholders. You know who you are. Please reconsider selling out to a mirror. Let Grand Bahama Power Company continue to have the aiming interest so that so that it can never fall into the hands 100 percent to a foreign company. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Brooklyn Dogan?